Welcome back to your free Windows 7 training course. In this video, I will look at XP mode. If you have an application that you cannot get running in Windows 7, XP mode may be your last option to get that application running with Windows 7. Even with the options I looked at in the last two videos, you may have problems getting software to run on Windows 7 that was designed with operating systems such as Windows XP in mind. When running in this mode, the software is run in a virtual PC. This is the same as running two PCs on the same computer. This puts more load on the computer and also increases the amount of RAM the PC needs. This is why it is considered a last resort. The virtual PC is running Windows XP Professional with Service Pack 3, so any application that works on this operating system should work in Windows XP mode. To use Windows XP mode, you need to be running the Professional, Enterprise, or Ultimate editions of Windows 7. Let's have a look at how to install XP mode. To use Windows XP mode, you first need to download it from Microsoft. If I open Internet Explorer, you can see at the top the address for the download. To find this page, I used a search engine. The next thing I need to do is select the operating system that I am using and the language. Once these are selected, at the bottom of the web page, you can see a number of downloads Microsoft has selected for you. The first is Windows XP mode. This is basically the Windows XP virtual machine. The next download is Windows Virtual PC. This is required to run the Windows XP mode image. The last download is an update required if your CPU does not have hardware assisted virtualization. Remember that for hardware assisted virtualization to work, it must be enabled in your BIOS. If I now go back to my desktop, you can see I have already downloaded the three executables. The first one will install XP mode on the local computer. The install is very simple. Next, your way to the finish. This will copy the virtual machine to your local computer. In order to run XP mode, I need to run the next executable, which will install Virtual PC. The install again is quite a simple one. At the end, the install does ask for the computer to be restarted, but I will postpone that restart in order to install the last update. This update is required if your computer does not have hardware-assisted virtualization. Again, a very simple setup. Once complete, I will reboot the computer. Once the computer has restarted, I am now ready to configure XP mode. To do this, I need to go to the Start menu and run XP Mode, which can be found under Windows Virtual PC. Once I have accepted the license agreement, I will be asked for a username and password. This is the username and password that will be used to log in to the Virtual XP computer. On the next screen, I can select whether I want to automatically download and install updates to the Virtual XP Mode computer. Remember. XP Mode is basically a virtual Windows XP computer running on your PC, so needs to be patched like any other computer. On the next screen, Setup will inform you that it is going to share the local devices, such as hard disks, so XP Mode can access them. In a moment, I will show you how XP Mode can access any local hard disk on your computer. Once I press Start Setup, the final configuration will be completed for XP mode to run on this computer. The process does take a long time to complete, so I will pause the video and return when it is almost completed. Once the setup is completed, I will be given access to the desktop for the virtual XP mode computer. If I open Windows Explorer, you can see that there are a number of shares that have been mapped back to the local computer. This gives me access to the floppy disk drive, the C drive, and the CD-ROM. On the Windows 7 computer, I have downloaded a powerful calculator supplied by Microsoft. This particular version only works correctly on Windows XP and does not fully support Windows 7, a good candidate to test XP mode. 
I will now install the application on the XP Mode virtual machine as I would any other application. The install for this application is simple. Once again, I next my way to the end. If I open the Start menu, you will see that shortcut has been created to run this application. If I now close Windows XP Mode, the virtual machine running XP Mode is placed in hibernation mode. While in hibernation mode, it does not use any resources on the local computer such as CPU and RAM. If I now go to the Start menu and open Windows XP Mode applications, I can now run a shortcut for the application that I just installed. Notice that when I run the application, I get a message saying that a user is still logged in to XP Mode. To prevent this message occurring, you are best logging off the virtual machine or shutting it down. Once the virtual machine has started up, my application has started. Notice that the application is now running on my Windows 7 computer. This application, however, is still running on a Windows XP virtual computer. If you look at the title bar, you can see that it is the Windows XP title bar. It is more noticeable when I open another window for you to compare them with. You can now easily see the differences in the title bars. If I now go into the File menu and select the Load function, again, the local computer is accessible through these mapped drives. Having the application interact seamlessly with the desktop does make it less noticeable to the end user that the application is in fact running on a virtual machine. However, given that the local drives are still accessed via mapped drives, XP mode is not a perfect solution but in some cases may be your only solution. This concludes application compatibility. In the next video, I will start looking at application restriction, that is, deciding which applications your users can and cannot run.